I don't think I've been more nervous in my life than the night before Hell Week. Like sitting in that tent, sleeping. I don't know how dudes passed out. There was guys snoring in there. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm sitting there on edge, antsy, just like, oh, dude, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Here it is. Before we move on, Hell Week is always a, people are just fascinated with it. Mm. So what were, what are some memorable experiences that happened to you in Hell Week that just stick out? Yeah. Oh, man. I think uh, for me, I, I don't think I've been more nervous in my life than than the night before Hell Week, like sitting in that tent, sleeping. I don't know how dudes passed out. There was guys snoring in there. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm sitting there on edge, antsy, just like, oh, dude, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Here it is. And I just remember looking down, up and down the tent, there's dudes passed out snoring. I'll never forget that. And then boom, it happened, right? Like the breakout for me was, that was one of the most memorable because I mean, one, I knew it was coming. You heard about it. You, you've seen it on, on Discovery Channel. But until it happens, like, you just don't know, right? And then yep. a machine gun going off with the blanks, everybody yelling at you, flipping cots, and there you go. Here we go. And uh, I remember looking up and down, and there's a photo of me uh, in the front lane of rest with just water hitting the, the like, spraying with the hose. And I had the biggest grin ever, like, it's finally here. Like the crucible is finally here. I finally get to to do it, and I, I love that photo. I, I I don't have it framed, but I look at it quite. You know, as I go through some of the, my favorite photos, it pops up every year or two. Uh, I'm probably gonna frame that one because that that for me, that emotion, that feeling of of working your tail off, almost flubbing it up with the whole you know Hugo Bay Bridge jumping incident. Um, but then finally being able to be in it, like you earned it. Now let's see what you can do with it. And yeah. um, that was probably the most memorable for me. Did you have any portions where you thought you were gonna quit? Not in Hell Week, but in third phase. Um, third and, phase? Yeah. No way. Yeah, San Clemente. You went, you went all the way to third phase and then thought about quitting? There is a fleeting moment, man, where so it was it was the time of year, and we had Thanksgiving off, and the instructors are super nice to us. They're like, "Oh, you guys are just gonna go to San Clemente, take your time, and you know enjoy the holidays. When we come back January, it's gonna be we're just gonna it's a gentleman's course out there." Psychologically, they had planted that seed, and I had no idea what they were doing. Thanksgiving come back, we do a little bit of workouts between Thanksgiving and Christmas break, and then we go off for Christmas. I'm crushing pumpkin pies, like eating turkey and ham, ice cream on top of my apple pie. We come back, and it's still playing the game. They're like, this is, you know, we're just going to go out there. We're going to do some demo. It's going to be awesome. We land on that plane, and they beat the living piss out of us from the second we got there until, like, the second we left. And it was raining. It was January. You know how, how SoCal is. So... It's just, it's cold, not too cold, but cold enough where you're miserable and you're completely soaked from this drizzle that's happened in this marine layer and, and you're running up and down with the pallets on your back. And I was like, this is by far the worst part of buds for me. Like, and it didn't help. Like the instructors had carte blanche out there. So like, there's no, the command's not there. They're not overlooking the instructors. So we yeah. had one dude who, is a good friend now and he's a coach in the plant medicine space. But back then he was the biggest drunk. And he would first, like every morning we wake up and we'd have to figure out a way to get to the chow hall without running into instructor Burns. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and we'd like kind of maneuver out, like where is he? See, and then we take <laughs> off and all of a sudden you hear him, he'd be in the in the trees behind a like Behind the trash cans, he'd be under, like, I was just like, dude, this dude's everywhere. And he would beat the living piss out of you all breakfast. You wouldn't get breakfast. And I hated him, man. I was like, dude. So every bit of that was just horrible for me. I hated it. And there was times where I was like, I don't want to do this, man. Yeah. Were they targeting you? It was everybody. It was the whole class. Felt like me, but it was yeah. everybody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right on, man. Yeah. Well, see, so you, 
You get through Budge, yep. you go through SQT. What team are you going to? I go to four. Four? Yep. How was it arriving at four? Yeah, they took our tridents, put them in the birdcage, nice. said we, we didn't earn shit, and um, and then we hopped on the road, man. It was a condensed, I don't know if you were part of that, I think you were, where they were condensing the workup cycles, but we were we were going to Baghdad, and we were leaving in nine months. Um. But it was fun, man. I had a couple brothers there with me from Buds, and you know the old guys were pretty good. They were really focused on, hey, we're going to war, so they weren't assholes. Um, no hazing, none of that. There were some. There were a some. Bit. Yeah, but I don't think hearing some of the other stories and the other teams, like I think we got off easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't <laughs> no. know how it was for you. Like how was how was it for you? It was. I deserved everything that came my way. <laughs> So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the any... next uh, congressman from the third dris- district of uh, of Tennessee here. Yeah, I, uh, No, I mean, I, you know, when I showed up, it was it was uh, the older guys in my platoon. When I showed up, had had really bad hazing experiences, uh, and they yeah. decided that they weren't going to do that to the uh, to the new generation, and then. And then I got cocky, and uh, and I got my ass handed to me on a silver platter a couple of different times, and and uh, eventually wised up. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was there. It was happening where guys were slipping up, um, and they do the fun like it wasn't fun. It was still hazing, but um, I think it was a little lighter. They liked us. Still beat us, but um, again, like I've heard some horror stories. Now there was one incident we were in land warfare, and me and that same dude Zaid fucked up. You guys were in the same platoon. Yep. Oh man. I know. Wow. And uh, same troop. He was in a different platoon, but um, we were big hunters, and on the army base there in Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. There's like this huge impact zone where they drop bombs and it's off limits. There's a lot of like ranges that are off limits. Well, Zayd and I would take one of the side by sides and just go out there and hunt. And it started off like, hey, let's get one for the platoon or for the troop and we'll, we'll butcher it up. We'll bring it back and we'll grill and we'll have the other platoon grill while one's out doing runs and vice versa. And we're eating fresh venison. It was awesome. Second weekend, I mean, we went through that like that. A couple of runs, all the meat was gone. So let's get a couple more. So the second weekend, we go out there and we shoot a couple more uh, on the first day. And then in, we're not wanting to butcher up all these animals. So then it, we let's just take like the hindquarters and the back straps, the good meat. And then it became, let's just take the back straps. And then bloodlust set, set in, dude. And we just started killing everything. Oh. It got bad. So bad that um, Monday morning we're back on the ranges and he elbows me and I look at him and he get, tells me to look, kind of look up and I look up and I see turkey vultures circling and I start counting. I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15 different sites where we had put down deer and taken the meat off of it. Well, somebody saw us running around doing this, reported it to the game warden. We're sitting there counting this, and the instructors come out and is like, hey, who was out shooting freaking deer this past weekend? And Zay and I put our hand up. He's like, you dumbasses. Like, the game warden's on his way. Like, he'll be here this afternoon. You guys have a couple hours to go get all the carcasses, and we're going to blow them. It's 100 degrees out there, and it's only the weekend, but by the time we get to the first carcass, it is covered in maggots. And it was one of the most vile things I've ever done in my life. This thing, you're just picking these up, and you're like throwing them in the back of the trailer, and you're going from site to site. You're just kind of honing in on like, okay, that those vultures are right there. There they are. And then we pick it up. Dude, it was disgusting. You're covered in... It was nasty, man. I'll um, bet. We get it to the site. We blow that thing up. All the evidence is gone, but... Dude, we got beat for that one. And I'll rightfully bet. so. They beat the living piss out of us. Well, what did the game warden say? Uh, he was friends with everybody. And, like, let me just say, like, 
I would never do that now. I, I have such respect for like hunting and harvesting and a different point in my life. Um, so I respect like when we go hunt, we, we harvest everything and we, it fills our freeze, our freezer with elk or deer. And back then we were just, I was an idiot. I'll speak for myself. Um, Gabe Morton was friends with the instructors, and by the time they get there, it was all cleaned up. He basically pulled us aside, said, don't ever do that shit again. Like, people are watching you guys. So. Damn, dude. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Largest year I ever shot, though, was from there, and I got it, I got it, in my, I got it somewhere. I'm not going to say where. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.